and I still love that intro. What's going on, guys? It is your boy Tickety Ones here, back in here on Plays and Source. And yes, you read that intro right. You read the title right. We are doing another Road to episode with, of course, Road to Final Fantasy VII Remake. So again, links below in the description if you're listening to this live on not live. I'm not recording live. I'm recording. I'm a dummy. But if you are watching this on YouTube and you want to watch this on an audio format, you can go down to our anchor link below in the description. You'll be able to find our link to be able to find this on all different podcast services. That, of course, being Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, all the good stuff. You can follow us audio only for our long form content, such as this show, as well as my other Road 2 uh, podcasts as well, that including Road to Part 2, as well as, of course, Safe Slot Podcasts as well. Links down below in the description. And, of course, down below, there's also links to everything that we talk about today because we are talking a little bit about the remake and kind of how it's shaping up because there's been, there's been a lot of different things that have come out, uh, you know, regarding, of course, 5 Ace and Remake that I think is pretty interesting and it's really, you know, I feel like noteworthy to at least talk about in some shape form or fashion so uh ff7 remake you know it's coming out i believe in two weeks i think april 10th i believe is the release date uh yes april 10th is the release date i'm excited for it you know especially us being right now in this world that we're living right now in this quarantine uh i'm gonna be very very uh you know happy to be able to play this game and really get immersed and get lost in this world and stuff like that that you know i've been personally just have not stopped thinking about since i played the demo you know so uh first thing we'll talk about here is i think the biggest you know controversy of this game i feel like going into it is the notion that it is split up into multiple games so if you guys weren't aware they are splitting up the original 5a7 remake what we are getting on april 10th it won't be the full final Fantasy 7 game it'll be split into different sections of the game and and uh this particular section i believe is covering midgar i'm not sure of where you go, you know, on the other parts. So again, I've never played the original Five Fantasy Seven, but this, uh, you know, first uh, remake part is going to be covering the Midgar section. And so there was an interview that was done, uh, I believe, on the official Square Enix website that offers a little bit of clarification on why they decided to split the game into multiple different games and stuff like that. So uh, it says here that the producer Yoshinori Kitase, I think is how you say it, or Kitase. I, Again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about your name. I'm sorry. But it says that the team was presented with two options right at the beginning of development. It could either go all in one way, all all in on detail and section the story into parts, or it could remake the whole Final Fantasy VII and be forced to cut content or to make the project viable. And so in the producer's own words, he says, quote, at the beginning of the project, we had two directions we could go. The first was to make the project with the highest possible level of graphics, visual quality, and detail, and not remove anything that, that the fans wanted to see. Instead, it would expand upon the original game to make it something even more immersive. The other option was to include the entire scope of the original game in a single release but in order to make that work as a modern game we, we wouldn't be able to go for the highest visual quality and we'd also have to cut back on areas seen from the original from the original game essentially to make a single release viable the resulting game would have ended up being a digest of the original story and we didn't think that fans would be pleased with that ultimately we decided the best option for the project was to go for the highest level possible with an expanded story having more than one game in the project allowed us to focus on keeping everyone Everything people loved from the original, but go into greater detail and more story depth than before. And so that's essentially what he said was the overall reasoning behind the studio and kind of like, you know, behind closed doors, what, what they were thinking and what they were attending overall with 5 by 7 Remake. And so first up here, you know, I do commend them for being, you know, so upfront and so like, hey, you know, this is uh, this is the decision that we were kind of stuck with uh, on two different fronts. Like I, I really implore them and really applaud them, if I may, uh, for their honesty here in this article, in this interview. You know what I'm saying? Just to be straight up front, like, hey, like, you know, we were really thinking about giving you guys like, you know, a quote unquote from their point of view, like a half ass, uh, you know, game versus we wanted to, you know, also have another side of the coin where, where we want to give you guys a bigger experience a better experience and just blow up what 557 means to you all in a modern scope so uh there they obviously w went with the latter you know and i feel like it's gonna pay off you know like i feel like a lot of people were pretty impressed with the demo i know there's a lot of people that didn't like the demo as well but i feel like overall 
the consensus was pretty positive on the remake and stuff like that. So I think overall it's going to pay off because, you know, this remake is adding a lot of new stuff that was not in the original game, including like new side quests, new areas to explore and stuff like that that were not in the original game. So it looks like, you know, they are really doubling down on this and really making it a high quality and really just, you know, making sure it's... It, it, it goes beyond the realm of like a remaster that that you know it's not just an up res it's not just like you know a a you know just upper enhancement da, da, da. you know you're not just replacing assets and stuff like that you are it, this is truly a remake like what if Final Fantasy 7 was made in today's landscape in today's gaming mechanics in in today's world of gaming and so it looks like they are really really doubling down on that and you know you can't really knock them for it you know and um a lot of people you know are, are very like you know wishy-washy about the concept of splitting it up into potentially a trilogy like we don't know how many parts this game is going to be uh you know judging by everyone uh you know that has played the that has played the original game and they're having this part one be in midgar people are assuming that there'll be three different parts i guess there's three different coherent sections within the original 5 ic 7 that a lot of people are pointing towards it is it, it is it is, it is going to be a trilogy and everything and i heard very like poignant you know arguments in terms of like why are people so upset about you know 5 ic 7 remake being into three different parts when the the modern trilogy arc you know isn't a new thing in gaming right i think uh that that argument is is a bit kind of like not really given the full context because you know, like the Uncharted trilogy, you know, when that came out or when God of War trilogy came out, you know what I'm saying? Like those, those weren't plans. Uh, I mean, I guess they, that trilogy wasn't originally one game back in the day, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, like, yeah, it's easier to quote unquote, like, you know, accept an Uncharted trilogy and a God of War trilogy because it had never been, there had never been an Uncharted or a God of War prior to that trilogy right so to have a game that used to be one game now split into three i can see where, where they're talking about but i feel like overall the amount of effort they are putting into this is really going to pay off you know like i feel like they seem to know what they're doing they seem to have a vision for what they want to create and it looks like they're gonna double down on that so i can't wait to see how it all unfolds and everything and uh, of course uh check out you know of course all the content that we'll be putting that we that we'll be putting up on the channel involving five sc 7 remake and stuff like that so going on here you know of course we have talked about you know playing five and remake and stuff like that and experiencing the whole story and everything and even for you longtime fans you coming back to the story and coming back to this game in the remade format what does the end game look like you know because end game is a big thing that you gotta talk about in games these days you know like what is going to keep you coming back to the experience what is gonna make you coming back to the game to the software to the ip and uh you know of course uh it looks like they do have a plan for that again with a new interview uh, that was also done this is for the co-director i mean from the co-director excuse me uh let's try and say his name let's go naoki hamaguchi well honestly that sounded pretty right that that's on kevin i'm so proud of you man yo that sounded pretty right let me know down in the comments below if i got that right uh, again link down below in the description but he says here that quote the content you mentioned from other 5 v 7 games i don't want to say precisely what's in 5 v 7 remake but if you're expecting end game content you won't be disappointed and so that is i believe where he lives it off. okay no okay so he says here that uh other sentiments include the fact that 5 v 7 remake was designed quote as if it were a standalone game and comparable in size to other mainline 5 v 7 games so i guess that was him just giving context in terms of you know how big of a scope they have for this remake but you know they really didn't give us anything here so uh it, it looks like they're definitely keeping that end game content you know to themselves until the game is out and stuff like that but uh maybe you know there will be some different quests different boss battles and stuff like that i'm assuming you know maybe uh uh you know different challenge things maybe maybe there'll be like challenge rooms where you're gonna want to utilize your speed and how you manage uh your uh ap gauge i think is what it's called i forgot i'm sorry i know i got roasted in my uh demo playthrough of how i played but hey you know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna get used to it people all right it's all good stop being you won't have to straight up merc me and stuff like that but it looks like uh you know they are really gonna double down on the end game content and i'm really you know interested to see what they bring in terms of end game like like what is 
what I mean, because for me personally, like you know how I always do every long game, every open world, every RPG, every every like games a service game. What I do when it first comes out, right? I do play it incorrectly, right? In terms of I go through the golden path and then I save all the extra stuff for a later date when I want to come back and and experience that game once again. So I have all that content to go back to. Like I did the same thing with Division 2. I do it with Destiny and stuff like that. So I'm planning to do the same thing here with this game, Horizon. That I did that as well with. So it looks like this will be one of those games where I'm going to definitely uh, do the same thing. But uh, it looks like there will be a lot of endgame if you don't want to wait for that like me and, and if you're not like me you can uh definitely go ahead and play that end game as soon as you uh get it and so there's another thing that i want to talk about here as well and if you guys watch my demo you would kind of get my first reaction of experiencing this for the first time right so uh you know since christian has been exposing me to a lot of different games that i haven't experienced in my past and stuff like that including the likes of kingdom hearts you know what i'm saying and, and uh, different things like that i have found that there's been a lot of really really good music in these games that i'm missing out on right like 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 kingdom hearts music a lot of it are bangers right and the same can be said for five a seven remake so there will be coming uh to wow i i said that completely wrong there there will be incoming i, I guess that's how i can save it a soundtrack for the game of course and i cannot wait because yo let me tell y'all something look you guys rewind the podcast, right? Just rewind it and listen to that intro one more time. Tell me that intro music doesn't slap. You know what I'm saying? Like, like all of the music in Final Fantasy VII so far that I've experienced has been absolutely tremendous. Like, like it, it, it sounds so good, so soothing. Like, I don't even know how to describe it, but, like, it is it is phenomenal, right? From what I've been hearing so far, right? Granted, I, I've only heard the demo music in there, but, yo, that battle music, I like the, the like, themes and stuff like that. Oh, my God, the, like, main sequence. It's, it's all of it is good stuff, right? But there will be a soundtrack coming up for the game, uh, and it's a really rather, you know, interesting uh, soundtrack because uh, it was revealed this week that the official 5A7 remake soundtrack is happening, but it will be spread across seven CDs. These people over here, man, they really want to double down. They, 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 they really want to double. Like the marketing department was like, "Listen, can we fit all this on one CD?" Yes, yes. We we definitely can, right? But that's not gonna get headlines. You know what I'm saying? What is gonna double down, right? If we double down on Five Five Seven Remake, right, and put the soundtrack on seven CDs, bro, that's how we're gonna do it. So they're they're insane for that. But you know what? I I I have to stand by and really commend them. Uh, you know, for just doubling down on Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Like, like, what is a Final Fantasy 7 Remake soundtrack without having seven CDs across all of it? You know what I'm saying? And it gets even better than that. So it's set to release this April, right? Through the Square Enix store, right? But it is unfortunately not the cheapest thing in the world. Hopefully they will put it up for streaming at some point. So, you know, I could, uh, you know, log into my Apple Music or you can log into your Spotify and listen that way. But I'm not sure if, if uh, that's going to happen with these prices. Okay. So it's going to cost 67 and 77 pounds, I believe, in the UK. And then get this, guys. Get this, guys. Ready? Ready for this? Ready for this? $77.77 in the US or 7,777 yen in Japan. These people are so insane. They really are doubling down on Final Fantasy 7 by making sure everything is 7 across the board, right? Are you telling me that if I pick up 587 Remake, am I going to get 7 copies? Is, is that what you're telling me, Square Enix? I don't know. Probably not, but that... I just have to commend, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have no other choice but to just be impressed, you know, by the marketing department, like, being able to double down <laughs> on 7 and uh, really, really get it going. But the first run is a limited edition and it actually comes with a bonus CD full of tracks taken from the in-game jukebox as well. So you can uh, get an eighth bonus CD if I believe you buy it, you know, in some sort of limited edition or whatever or maybe it comes automatically if you buy the first batch of cds but you will get an eighth bonus cd that comes with the in-game jukebox sub so 
I'm just thinking like, all right, like if I actually get this right, you know, cause I actually like to get albums, uh, you know, physically still, right? Like if I love, love an album, I'll go out and buy the CD just to have some sort of physical, uh, you know, format to it. And I really do like appreciate some of the artwork on my favorite albums and stuff like that. So I like to have like a physical representation of my favorite albums and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of implored to buy the CD, not to listen to it, but to just have it on my wall or something like that. Or like, can you imagine like getting like a frame? and having all of the seven cds like in a nice little thing you know what i'm saying like i think i think i think that could be looking hot you know i i mean like i'm just saying guys i don't know like i i honestly might think i might do it but let me know what you guys in the comments below do you guys want to get this seven cd collection featuring all the five seven remake music do you like the soundtrack do you hate the soundtrack do you wish i had the originals or who would be cool if they had the original uh you know sounds and the original soundtrack uh you know uh uh music to the original game with this remake cds as well that'd be cool to have that as well they should put that on the bonus album you know what i'm saying like they should do that screen is hire me you know what i'm saying but but let's move on to the <laughs> to the next to the next story here so moving on of course the remake is coming out april 10th as we said before and you know we do get some playstation exclusives you know and and this one is a timed exclusive to be fair but you know we uh do sometimes get those sexy limited edition special edition ps4s we got one of course for uh god of war spider-man ps4 of course with death stranding as well all the different sorts you know i believe days gone even actually no i don't know if days gone got one but besides the point you know we typically get those uh you know different consoles and uh it was a little bit weird not seeing one for five eight seven remake but that news did come to day and so the big catch here is that before i even go on and you know detail these limited edition consoles i do want to just make it up front that it is for japan only for the time right now so unfortunately if you want one of these you might have to go ship it in from over across the pond or maybe if you're in europe it's, it's over there a little bit closer than that there, there's no pond across but it looks like they haven't, you know, released any sort of way that if you were outside of Japan to be able to get this other than, of course, importing to your country. So just keeping that out there up front, you do have the choice of I, I love this part of this whole thing is that you can get a bundle with the standard PS4 or a bundle with the PS4 Pro. Because if you guys recall, the 25th anniversary of PlayStation 1, it only came with the regular base PS4. And I wanted a PlayStation 4 Pro version of that one so bad because it's blue and yellow. It looks so bad. It looked, I mean, by, and by bad, I mean good but i digress okay what is going on here what's really interesting actually is that you know a lot of people uh are really uh interested about the price because the price seems to be you know i'm gonna translate it into american dollars but okay you know what let me just try and say it. okay so for the regular ps4 it's twenty nine thousand nine hundred and eighty plus tax for yen so hold on let me let me let me say it again the regular ps4 pack costs to 29,980 yen plus tax and then the ps4 Bro and the ps4 pro bundle comes uh with the price of 39,980 yen plus tax so if you translate that into us dollars uh it's 275 for the ps4 and then 367 for the ps4 pro so it looks like they are selling these at the exact same cost or around the same cost that you would buy a ps4 or a ps4 pro for uh and not tacking on that extra 60 dollars for the game and so that was kind of odd because i feel like that's usually what they do with the different editions like this where you know it comes with with new game and stuff like that but i guess a lot of people were kind of thrown off that uh you know that 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 it's not included in the price i don't know a lot of people will, were just saying that on twitter i thought it was pretty normal how it didn't include the tax uh, include the price of the game but i digress but what's really cool is that on the same page you could also get you know if you don't want uh, oh and uh, by the way these these bundles don't have any like any cool designs or whatever like it's just a game uh that comes with the console like it's not like it's anything fancy but if you want to get a fancy faceplate on the same page link below in the in the description on the on the japanese playstation store uh like the website you can get a special faceplate for the center ps4 model that lets you have the cover replaced with some really cool 587 remake art that looks really, really cool the way it looks very like sleek and really really you know just true to final fantasy 7 at least from the vibe that i got from the demo so it looks really cool from that standpoint so if you don't want to fork up uh you know that bundle you can just grab that faceplate and you can swap it out for your ps4 and just to be clear about it so just the way it looks on the picture it looks like it is the playstation 4 model that was not the launch model with that like gloss uh you know like sliver you know what i'm saying but it's the 
uh it's the second version of the ps4 uh base ps4 that was released with the ps4 pro so that's what it looks like the faceplate will be compatible with but hey if you want that you can uh, definitely uh, go ahead and cop that from the japanese store uh who knows if these will ever make it to the western markets i'm pretty sure it will but we will have to see and lastly here, this really isn't, you know, uh, any any really big news per se, but it is something to look out for uh, in these, you know, gaming streets and these Reddit streets and these Twitter streets and all that and these reset era streets. Uh, definitely be on the lookout for spoilers because it looks like, uh, you know, with, of course, the times being right now, a lot of the world being in lockdown or some countries that should be locked down, <laughs> United States, but I digress. Uh, it looks like that hasn't stopped uh, the Blu-ray copies being printed, of course, of the upcoming Final Fantasy VII Remake coming out on April 10th. And so there was some uh, pictures put up on Reddit this week that were depicting a looks a pretty, it looks like a pretty legit uh, copy uh, of Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I believe it's some sort of the special edition because there's like um, a mini soundtrack in there. There's like an art book, what, what looks like a steel book case, all that stuff. So it looks like this is one of the higher tier editions uh, of the game that has been distributed out in the wild so who knows if if like you know this was if if you know this was i don't know like stolen or or just sold prematurely you know what i'm saying who knows but it is out in the wild there are physical copies and there's and there will likely be more as we get closer to release date so just make sure uh if you are trying to you know avoid them spoilers make sure to go duck and cover and stuff like that and make sure uh you uh, stay safe out there right so stay indoors and you know what i mean by all means like go on twitter and start blocking final fantasy 7 you know off of your mentions and off of uh, your feed and stuff like that you can do that as well if you really want to protect yourself from uh spoilers and stuff like that so be on the lookout make sure to be wary of that and that's pretty much all i got so i don't even know what to tell this episode i'm gonna just call it like uh you know the uh, you know what i will get to the title when i get to it but that has been this week's episode of Road to Final Fantasy VII Remake, Episode 3. If you all enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video as well. Stay subscribed to plays and stores to keep up with the latest and greatest and play this. And down below, of course, you can find our links to our description where you can find links to our description. Down below in our description, you can find our links. There we go. To our Twitter, our Discord, as well as an anchor link to listen to our long form content and podcast format. That, of course, being Road to Part 2, Road to Final Fantasy VII Remake, and of course, uh, Save Slot Podcast down below. Make sure to go follow our podcast feeds down below in the description. Like the video if you enjoyed it, as well as stay subscribed to Play and Source to keep up with the latest and greatest in PlayStation. Thank you for watching, and as always, greatness awaits.